Hello Indie Game fans, it's another huge week of new releases since games are getting out of the way of the Steam Next Festival next week, where JRPG fans in particular will be very happy since we have releases like Beloved Rapture, a pixel art JRPG that looks awesome and nails everything in terms of presentation down to the menu UI sound effects. This has your standard war-torn world kind of setting where a cultish militia threatens the hometown of our protagonist who then goes on what seems like a typical hero's journey kind of story. It has a total of 6 playable characters, each of which have unique skills and abilities with no random encounters, active or weight type battle modes, and plenty of exploration and side content. So if you love JRPGs, this should be of interest. Another title whose release drops out of nowhere is Shady Knight, a first-person action title where your primary tools are a chain dagger and your kick, along with swords and bows, resulting in some of the most acrobatic looking combat that I have come across where this has been in development for quite a while, so I'm happy to see it make it to release. This video is brought to you by Skogdao, a roguelite deck builder but with a handcrafted world having one of the most interesting art styles and concepts that I have come across. It takes place in the titular rustic Norwegian town in the 1990s where the people of the town have gone mad and it is up to you to uncover the mystery. While it is run based and you participate in deck building combat, the larger picture is that you are exploring the handcrafted town defeating different bosses on different runs to unlock more of the world, having a John Carpenter style mystery at the heart of it all with plenty of secrets to uncover. This is made by two Norwegian brothers who are drawing upon their own upbringing and the pop culture of the 80s and 90s and will be part of the Steam Nix Festival next week, but its demo is already available now so go play that on Steam and wishlist the game via the link in the description below. You can be nice to real people. I last talked about Kind Words 2 when previewing the upcoming games of the month being the follow-up to a letter writing game from 2019 which was quite the surprise hit. You could anonymously pour out your feelings into the void and on the other end, a player can receive and reply to the letter, hopefully passing on some kind words so that you feel better when you receive the reply. The sequel allows you to leave your bedroom and to explore the city, adding elements like dress up, poetry and more where the moderation in the first game was great, so I don't see trolls being a problem here, resulting in just a cozy experience. Love indie games? Sign up to my newsletter to get a weekly dose of what's hot, along with some news and of course, weekly game giveaways, so if interested, link is in the description below. A roguelite symbol builder of interest is Spin Hero, a subset of the roguelite deck builder that was popularized by Luck Be A Landlord, in which you are collecting symbols to increase their odds of appearing on the slot machine, using these to create giant combos to defeat your enemies, but this time in a more common fantasy world, where you play as a hero defeating monsters and with over 120 symbols in the game should have plenty of interesting synergies to exploit. A special shoutout goes to Glyphica Typing Survival as well, another spin on the Vampire Survivors formula, but this adds in a typing game element where you frantically hammer away at the keys on your keyboard to defeat enemies. It is not only about typing out the random words on enemies to destroy them, but also to use special weapons and abilities, looking like a clever twist and should, at the very least, improve your typing skills. The ultra cozy management life sim Ember Isles is also of interest, being set on an island filled with prehistoric creatures, where you are able to customize and personalize your own dinosaur avatar and are also able to run a shop in town. You can explore and gather resources and then to craft these into useful items to sell, only to then use the profits to expand your shop and repair the village. This is all while befriending the other paleo folk 
as you uncover the mysteries of the island and looks super charming and chill without any distinct antagonistic forces other than, say, failing to haggle with customers, so for a relaxing time, this will be of interest. Okay, I'm not quite sure what to expect from this game, but it sure has a fun and interesting art style in which Anthology of the Killer self-describes as a surrealist horror comedy series set in a mysterious world of zines and blood, being very internet if you know what I mean and could be cool. It reminds me of things that you would find on Newgrounds or Itch.io, with the contributors possibly having a large following of their own, which could lead to something like this blowing up, where the 9 games in the anthology seem interesting and are perfect for this time of year. The developer of Bits at Work did reach out, and I thought that it looked neat, a minimalist management sim in which you are building the perfect workplace trying to keep employees happy and the numbers all going up. It has a very minimalist presentation which works in this case and should be free as well so no harm checking this out. A possibly huge game this week is Dead Season, a turn-based tactics title that once again uses the zombie theme in which a group of strangers must band together to survive the zombie apocalypse. Yes, Zombies are overdone at this point, but yet there's still an appetite for these, with the tactics in this looking neat and does have variety beyond the box standard zombies. In fact, some of these do resemble the special infected from Left 4 Dead, such as the tank and the hunter equivalents, but still, as a tactics title, this should be of interest. Another game which has been in development for quite a while is Declines Drops, a self-described platform brawler using the combat system of platform fighters like Smash Brothers, but in a single-player experience. This means that you are jumping around and fighting enemies on platforms, but also traversing from one area to the next, all with platform fighter feeling controls and combat does look neat. Now I'm not the biggest player of this style of fighting game, or fighting games in general to be honest, but if you are, this might be worth a look, and even if, like me, you are not the biggest fan, games like this are a great way to try to expand your gaming palette and is the hidden gem of the week. The developer of Extra Coin did reach out to me quite a while ago, where I have an email from them dating back to October 2020, so it has been a while where this narrative focused live sim title does look like it has interesting ideas. While it is pixel art, that is not the main draw here, but rather allows you to switch between reality and a virtual utopia. But not in that pleasant kind of way, but rather being more akin to something like The Matrix. Will you stay in the loop of the simulation, going to the movies, the gym, or even to battle bosses in what looks like tennis, or will you break the loop to find your missing parents? As such, it looks to have one of the most interesting premises and setups, not to mention variety in gameplay, and was my second choice for hidden gem of the week. Just a quick one here in Guild Saga Vanished Worlds, a turn-based tactical RPG that follows in the footsteps of the classics, which I'm guessing would be titles like Final Fantasy Tactics, where you must gather a party of heroes and fight your way through a mysterious island. I'll have more to say on this later in the week, but if you love tactics titles, give this a go. Lands of ancient myths are calling, and in this divine realm, the Olympian god's favour is a prize won by the bold and cunning. This week also sees the release of the latest DLC for Kingdom Two Crowns titled Call of Olympus, one that is, obviously, Greek mythology theme, bringing in mythological mounts like Cerberus, Pegasus, and more, as well as a multi-stage boss fight with a serpent. You are recruiting hoplites and laying siege to enemy fortresses, all while proving your worth to the pantheon of Greek gods and calling upon their favour. This follows similar expansions with a Norse mythology and Japanese theme, with the format looking to have potential for future expansions as well. Brave, stand up. Another wonderful looking title is Last Time I Saw You, an adventure platformer with some action elements set in 1980s Japan and tells a coming-of-age story. 
you are exploring a haunted forest that hides a terrible secret with supernatural elements like yokai that you will interact with, or wrapped up with one of the most beautiful art styles that I have come across. In terms of gameplay, this might resemble something like Night in the Woods, where you are going around, jumping and talking to people, but does have some environmental puzzles, side objectives and more, and might be a rather heartwarming game as a whole. Indie games from smaller developers do always seem to take longer than expected to make, since I've had my eye on Necro Story for quite a while, being the follow-up to Healer's Quest from 2018, where I only just realised that it has been 6 years since that last game. This has a similar art style to their previous game, and if the same kind of design elements apply, should be a turn-based RPG as well, but where you play as a necromancer and has monster taming elements and has potential to be pretty neat. Ever so often, we get glimpses into the future of video games with titles like Pizza Apocalypse, a 3D platformer where you play as a pizza chef and traverse through vaguely Italian looking environments, and is a student project that was made in just 12 weeks. Of the game development schools, the one that I see crop up the most often on Steam is Breda University of Applied Sciences, which is from the Netherlands, and I agree with their method of making and releasing a game on Steam as a core part of the curriculum. And hey, this looks pretty good, so the future of games, and hopefully indie games, looks pretty bright. If you love automation titles, a game with a twist is ReBot, another first-person title like Satisfactory, only you are not building conveyor lines but rather are using not-so-intelligent robots instead. As such, this has a little bit of an Autonauts feel to the game, but of course first-person instead, having an interesting colour palette as well and could be neat. Remember when I said that JRPG fans would have a good week? The developer of Scarmond did reach out, and from what I know of this developer, they exclusively make games in not just this genre but this style as well, with more of a retro throwback focus instead of having modern high bit pixel art, for example. As such, there is a retro charm to the game where your party of adventurers, selected from 12 available classes, are in search of the Dragon God's secret treasure and looks to have all the systems that you would want in a game like this. I first caught wind of Simulacros Cross on Twitter and thought that the hair physics stood out the most, maybe not being entirely necessary and I wonder how it will affect performance. But this third person shooter action roguelite looks to have good action and might be cool. We don't have that many roguelites from this perspective, so it is offering something different, with the mixing in of kicks to your attacks in particular looking fun. After a little bit of a delay, we also have the early access release of Spear Song, a turn-based tactical RPG with a Slavic mythology theme, in which Slavic knights battle evil monsters and attempt to cleanse the land and protect the kingdom. It is not a pure level-based title, but rather has a more open-world procedurally generated structure where a party of heroes has to travel to certain locations to fight monsters but does also have kingdom upgrading as a larger meta progression system. I like my turn-based tactics titles and this looks neat, so hopefully they will have gotten the balance between the different characters just right. If you love the overcooked style of co-op party game, the title of interest here is Tipston Salvage, where you play as forklifts in a junkyard which is very different from everything else that I have come across in this space. You are attempting the equivalent of 3 starring a level by completing it in the shortest amount of time possible, but with forklifts with rocket boosters instead of running around as characters, being charming enough for me to give it a mention. The art style and visuals of this next title might not be for everyone, since Tower of Dreams has an ultra-minimalist pixel art look where your character is very tiny indeed relative to the size of the entire play area, and is a vertically oriented roguelite platformer where you can use your sword to pogo off objects and enemies to ascend further up. The speed of this game looks to be next level, especially when you are bouncing off objects, where I'm pretty charmed by the look of this myself, so if you are as well, do give this a chance.
Here's a charming looking puzzle game named Town Frame, which resembles those word logic questions that you used to get in school, such as I used to live in the biggest house in town, which was on a hill next to a tree, and you then have to modify the corresponding picture so that it matches the description, looking simple in concept but also charming in presentation. And I do wonder how deviously difficult the puzzles will become as the game progresses. This one's for indie game developers. The free indie game marketing resources are ready, so sign up via the link in the description below to get it in your mailbox. It's a huge week, but the best is yet to come, where we have this charming pixel art management sim named Sky Brew Entropic Strategies, where you're not just running any old cafe, but rather one that is flying in the skies. You're doing very management sim things like constructing the cafe and placing down furniture, optimizing the layout to most effectively serve your customers while still trying to retain some semblance of design and style. There are random events to challenge you as well as a card system we can use these to trigger special abilities like increasing sales or improving employee productivity. We are also in a constant battle against entropy, which measures the level of chaos in the cafe, where I'm not quite sure what the structure of this game is and if there is any fail state so to speak of, which will force you to restart, but still, an awesome looking game that kind of came out of nowhere. Another awesome looking JRPG is Sky Ocean's Wings for Hire, one that follows the adventures of a crew of sky pirates as they face off against the evil alliance who is exerting their control over all. This mixes some awesome character portraits with a chibi art style in the exploration portion along with some awesome looking planes in combat for quite the fantastic look. Despite being about dogfights, this is a turn-based RPG through and through and thus seem to be paying tribute to Skies of Arcadia, a cult classic from the Dreamcast but for a new age and has the potential to be something special. Now here's a release that I've been looking forward to in Daiso Mensa, which goes to show how a little animation can go a long way, being a turn-based roguelite deck builder with amazing art and animation. For one, enemies are not static images and do actually animate and react to your attacks, and speaking of which, playing cards like a sword strike or even a punch causes your character to animate in first person to carry out the attack, which gives it an awesome look. The dice in this game comes in the form of D20s, which are used for various checks, adding more randomization to the deck builder and might be strategically satisfying. We also have the highly anticipated release of Anima Flux, a sci-fi metroidvania where you might not exactly be playing as the good guys, being agents of a theocratic dictatorial regime who are sent to the last human outpost to fend off waves of mutants. The most interesting part of this game is the co-op focus being built for two players with two unique characters, although you are still supposed to be able to play single player, having a cool look and might be for fans of the genre. The exploration adventure game Europa is one of the most beautiful games that I have ever come across, having a Studio Ghibli inspired art style and world where you play as an android exploring the moon Europa, which is now a fallen utopia, discovering the story of the last human alive in the process. For me, exploration and discovery in games is the most important factor, whether it be discovering ways to break the game, mastering systems, or to simply immerse yourself in the world and looks to be the latter in this case, since while it does have light puzzle and platforming, that is not the focus, Rather, simply moving around in this world looks awesome and could be a much needed break from the real world. Watch this video for more of the best games of 2024. When we get to the island, we will show everybody.